Here we have Jordan and Renuka, Megan, <laughs> Danny, and Jenya. Probably because of her high def. Fancy it is oh, yeah. November 10th. Yes, it is. Is that correct? It November 10th? 10th? Is it the 10th? 2012? <laughs> Uh, so they say, we can't confirm, but Our we'll just go crazy. with 2012 It's now. 2012, okay. yo! What? <laughs> <laughs> the year's almost over! We gotta get a move on! We have to go! <laughs> There's a sense of urgency in the air. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> also a sense of let's have a party. Yes. Yes. And go. Mm-hmm. This is called an ocean called life. A lot of male-female polarity and stuff. That's the hardcore of something. This life is irreplaceable. Every moment is unique, is, is as unique as a snowflake and as temporal as every cloud that passes through the sky. This moment is the only one like it you'll ever live through, so embrace it, breathe it in, and live it as fully as you can, because this present moment may be a gift that you'll never receive if you don't open to it. Open yourself to life, like you would open yourself to the most intimate of lovers as if life knows you completely and is only waiting for your approval to start showering you with love and affection in the most pleasant of ways. Ways that seem to access desires within yourself that even you were not aware of. Life, like any woman truly in her power, will show love unconditionally, but sometimes that means that she will respond accordingly to a man who's lost his sense of purpose. She will show him that he is not in control by unleashing the fury of nature upon him. But truly, this is love. Showing the man what he is lacking has ignored or become unconscious of so that he may fully express himself once again when she has smashed his Tower of Babel, so that he can stop babbling on and may begin to create consciously again. So that he may love his woman, so that he may love life, but will never stop giving his gift to the world, no matter what his work is, what his art is, or whether anyone even accepts it or not, he will continue to bring light into the world through his creation. He will love the world to no end because he has already died to it. He is dead to the world and she has killed him. But only so that he may be reborn as light. So that he may shine unceasingly. She will continue to break him down, like waves upon the rocks. She will lovingly crash down upon him until his very core is exposed and raw. And he can feel the depth of everything with such intensity that it moves him as turbulently as this ocean called life that broke him down. Yet he remains still. And now the sun is shining, his light has been exposed, and his sails have been lifted by the wind she's blown his way. He's finally taken notice of the direction it's flowing and has aligned his sails with it so that he may continue onward towards his destination, which is his journey, and so that he may continue on towards his purpose, which is his passion. He has found peace within the constant change, a livable order amongst chaos. He is now residing in the eye of the storm. He has become the floodlight of consciousness which relentlessly pervades the darkness. He opens himself to the unknown to create with a passion unending. His focus and inspiration are infinite, as they are now sourced in the very depth of his existence. There is nothing ever perfected, yet he goes about his life's work. Everything created can be destroyed at any moment, yet he will continually create unceasingly either way. Because it's the journey, the question, and the expression that makes life worth living, not the destination, the answer, or the finished product. Although resting in the beauty of surrender can be blissful, life must continue to move forward with excitement and vigor. The roller coasters we call life wouldn't be as much fun without the twist turns and loops to throw us off. This is how life caresses us when we do not know ourselves. And until we learn how to keep the balance within ourselves, life will always keep pushing us back to our center. Like waves of the ocean will keep shaping the rock, creating masterpieces out of some of the most hard substances. Stress, pressure, and time are the only ways that a diamond can form. This is how life embraces us until we know ourselves at our core. It will erode what is not of our true nature until we are one with the ocean until we are transparent, clear conduits for the passion which this world needs. 
It's truly what this world craves and is what a woman craves in a man. She wants to be open, to be explored, to be worshipped, to be indulged in by consciousness. Life wants to be inebriated by your very presence and wants you to go further with it than anyone has ever taken it, forcefully but with, without force, with strength but with ease, with grace, as gently as the stream flows over the stones within it. No barrier can be moved, no block can, cannot be navigated by this constant flow of loving awareness. and presence, which pours into every facet of life which can be experienced. This is how we make love with life. This is how we begin to create from the will of God instead of from our stacks of conceptual belief systems and the fearful thoughts that may continue to Babylon. So we are here to bring back the vibes of Avalon and Atlantis blended with the modern evolutionary capabilities of humanity. This is revolutionary. A renaissance of consciousness is what we're undergoing. Let go of the old ways and pay attention to the seeds you're sowing. What's got to be weeded out and what you want to see keep growing. Embrace life. Live open fully to change and movement because whether you like it or not, life will move you and change you. Ebb and flow are constant, so learn how to dance with life. You can either wa you can so you can watch the wheels of life move round from center so that you can rest and be at peace within the eye of any storm and keep moving forward no matter what life shifts within you.